hello everyone and welcome to this video so in this video we'll be talking about um experiment management in ml flow so what we will i will do is i will create um different models um and then i would compare the metrics of the different runs in ml flow so we'll see how we can use ml flow for experiment management um so what we'll be doing in this video is to create three different models so i'll create a logistic regression model i'll create a model um an xg boost model and then also a neural network model and then we'll see how we can use ml flow to track the metrics um, and then the artifacts um, generated by these models so let's get started So first of all, I'm going to, um, so I'm in my um, workflow environment that we set up in the previous video. So I'm going to just type make, click enter, and then it would um, set up all my Docker images and containers. And then when this is set up, I need to copy the this link, which is the link to my um, Jupyter lab, and then open the browser and paste it in. So this is my browser. Paste it in, and there, uh, that is our um, Jupyter lab. So I need to go to my notebooks folder. And then the first thing, um, the next thing I will do is to create um, my first model, right? So I would go and then create a new notebook. I'll change the name of this notebook to Logistic Regression. Now let's um, start writing some code. So let me start off by changing this to Markdown. I'll say this is important packages. So, um, what packages do we need? So we need ML flow. Um, we need from sklearn dot metrics import one score confusion metrics go from sklearn dot model selection import let me make this larger yes Import train test split and then from SK learn dot linear model import logistic regression. Right. So um these are all the packages um that we will need for logistic regression and now let's take a look at the um the data set we are using so um i'll have a link in the description so this data set is uh the p 
Pima Indians diabetes data set. So based on some features, we are just trying to predict whether um, a person would have diabetes or not. So um, let's read this data. So we have pd.read csv and then we have that. This data has no header, so header is none. And then we have the head. So we have that. So it's a it's sort of like a binary, it's a binary classification problem. If I do df dot scribe. Um, so not df dot ilog. Um, so we just have um, zero or one. Um, let's look at the value counts for the last column. Uh, so it's um, it's it's unbalanced. It's an imbalanced um, classification problem, but we don't really care about using. Um, Balancing the data distributions and yeah, we're just showing you how to use ML flow to track your experiments So you can obviously add any other machine learning knowledge you have to get a, a good prediction model, right? So let's start off um, By splitting our data so um, Just going to call that data preprocessing. And then what do we do? So I would have my X to be EF. So everything but the last column. And then my Y will just be my last column so minus one and then i'm going to split my um my training my data into training and testing so we have x train x test y train y test and then we have train test split so x y test size is 0.33 we have random state I'm just going to write zero and then stratify plus one okay. so if you don't know what these um, arguments are you can read um, just tab and then you can read all what those arguments are right. or you can just look at the documentation for sklearn right. so after doing this um let me scale the data i'm going to also import so from sklearn dot preprocessing import main max scalar right and then i'm going to say mx is main max scalar and then i'll say x train is equal to mx dot bit transform x train and then x test is mx dot transform x train x test sorry All right so we have finished um so we have finished um processing our data and doing everything 
Um, the next thing is, so let's set up our environment, uh, uh, experiment, sorry. So I'm just going to say setting up experiment, run that, and then we will say ML flow dot set experiment. This would be our base line. I'm just going to call this base line predictions. Right. And then we'll say mlflow dot sklearn autolog. So by just typing mlflow dot sklearn dot autolog, mlflow will just automatically log um, a whole lot of metrics and artifacts. And I'll show you um, what it does. So it says baseline predictions does not exist, creating a new experiment, right? So it has created um, a new experiment. So let's go to our MLflow um, environment and then let's see. So localhost 5000 is our MLflow. And then we can see that the experiment on the experiments tab, it has created the baseline predictions. If we go there, we don't see any run because we haven't run any experiment yet. So we don't see any run there, but then the name has been created for us. So let's go and then create our effects experiment. So we will use a context manager. So we'll say ML flow dot start run. And then we'll say the run name is logistic regression baseline. Then this is us run. Our model is logistic regression. And I will say model.fit x train y train. And then we after fitting the model, we have some predictions. So we'll say model predict. Test and I will say Y prediction is MP. That's where the predictions is greater than 0 0.5. We'll have one, otherwise, we'll say it's a zero. And then we'll say F1. So we'll analyze the the performance of our models using the F1 score. So F1, so Y test, Y predictions, and then mlflow.log metric. So to log a metric, we need a key and a value. So the key for this is F1 experiment, we use an underscore instead F1 experiment score and then the value is F1, right? So with this, um, let me go ahead and run that. So you can see it has finished running. So um, we have um, that baseline predictions. And as you can see, um, a new run has been added and we have logistic regression baseline. If I click that, um, I have um, some parameters. So you can see that the metrics have been logged um automatically for us so you have the f1 score which has been logged the training accuracy training f1 accuracy training log loss a whole lot of um, um metrics logged for us and then you can see in the artifact also that um you have the model which has been we will look at how to use this model 
We also have the confusion metrics that has been um, plotted for us. We have the precision recall curve. We have the ROC curve, which has also been um, logged. Right. So yeah, um, this is um, how you can use um, um, MLflow to um, log um, your um, experiments and also to create experiments. So this is our first model. And we'll move on to our next model, which is um, tracking the experiment with um, tracking MLflow, tracking XGBoost experiment with MLflow. So what happens if I rerun this experiment again? So I've added a new line to this experiment. So mlflow.log artifacts, where this time I'm logging the notebook that I used for this experiment. So if I go to my mlflow experiments tab, you can see that a new um, run has been created, right? For the logistic regression baseline. So we have a new run that has been created. And if I go there, you can see that the, the logistic regression um jupyter lab notebook has been also added to my artifact so you can also log your anything you can log anything you want to log in including the notebook that you are um, running using to run your artifacts to run your models right so um let's go ahead and then let me save that create a new um jupyter notebook I'm going to call this um, XG Boost. XG Boost. And then, um, what am I going to do here? Um, I'm going to copy um, all of this. I'm going to copy um, all of that. um i don't need this right um going to copy that um uh, yeah let's see if uh anyway but i just um made a copy of this notebook and then um just going to copy this also and yeah I think this should this should do so um I'm going to um run this run this um, yeah, I need to import XGBoost, so I'll say import XGBoost as XGB, right? And then run that again, we run that, we run that, and then um, to use XGBoost, we actually have to convert um, this um train and then the test data into um the exit um d train um array so d metrics array so um say ml flow dot set experiments experiment still we are still using the baseline predictions let's see if it's baseline predictions and then we would say ml flow dot xg boost dot auto log right and then we say d train so it's xgb.d 
metrics. So this is X train. And then our label is Y train. And then we have the D test. So we have xgb dot d metrics x test right and then um oh import ml flow um oh ml flow okay ah so many errors auto log all right and then we can open our context manager so with m l flow dot start run our run name is x g boost model s c boost Let me use the same so exit boost baseline as run and then we have our model is xdb dot train we have our d train d train parameters and then we have predictions so the same model dot predict the test and then i'm just going to copy this one also it's the same so why predictions f1 score and then we will log the notebook also so that is xg boost and save that hopefully we would have no errors okay so it's finished running without any errors so let's refresh that and we can see that um so uh, you can already see that you have logistic regression you have the x1 experiment score for logistic regression and then xg boost and then xg boost has a higher um f1 score than logistic regression so this makes it easy just using this makes it easy to uh, so we can also see our feature importance wait so which of the um, features is more important in the prediction model so you can see feature five feature one and feature six uh, more important than the others you can also see the uh, xg boost um which has been um, um which has been um logged let's go ahead and then do some comparisons So we can see um, um, the uh, our, our model. Um, so we can see this is logistic regression baseline model. This is for XG boost. You can do so many comparisons um, with the model. So we'll come to that later. Um, so yeah, with that, let's move on to our next model which is my favorite type of model. So neural networks. So with the neural networks, um, I'm not going to do so much typing. I'm just going to copy the logistic um, regression model. I think I can copy and paste. Yes. And then I'm going to uh, um, rename that into i'm going to call this keras model right 
and then I'm going to open that. All right. So let's change um, some of the. So we have import ML flow. Import that. I put import ML flow dot scarce. Um. From TensorFlow import keras right um what else do we need um yeah i think that's all we don't need and uh, let me just say import tensorflow right so let me just run this Run that, run that, run that, run that, run that also. And setting up experiments is still the baseline predictions. And here, instead of saying SK learn, we say mlflow dot tensorflow dot auto log um, that. And then let me create another um, tab. So this is um, where we would define our um, tensorflow model. So I would say input. So say keras dot layers dot input shape x train dot shape and then we'll define just one hidden layer so we'll say one layer so this keras dot layers dot dense right units um i'm just going to use maybe maybe six Activation value. Let me look. Um, so we have zero to seven. Um, yeah. I think six is okay. Um, activation is ReLU, and we'll pass input to that. Let's add some batch normalization so we have keras dot layers dot batch normalization and then that goes into layer one and then we just have our output so keras dot layers dot dense we have our units which is one activation is sigmoid and then we build the model so we have keras dot model we have our input and then we have our output and then we say model dot compile What is our optimizer? So keras dot optimizes optimizes dot Adam. We have a learning rate of zero point oh oh one. Um, <laughs> the loss is binary plus entropy the metrics is accuracy right so then let's say model dot summary right so let's run that and Oh, so this active 
shown. So this is our model. And then let's um, run our experiment. So I'll just change that to Keras baseline. And here we will not have logistic regression. Here we would have um, model.fit x train y train. We have epochs 20 um, validation split 0 0.05, 0.05, and then we have shuffle to be true. Okay, so F1 score. Um, and here we are going to log um notebook also so that will be keras but keras model so save that um yeah and let me just run that All right, so by running that, we can go to our ML flow model. And yeah, you can see that the Keras model actually gives us a very low um, F1 score. Uh, let me see what happens if I increase the um, number of epochs, 100. All right, and run that again. So yeah, you can see that actually, after increasing the number of epochs to 100, our Keras model actually um, is the one that gives us the, um, the highest um, accuracy, right? So um, this is just to show you. Obviously, you could run um, um, some um, some optimizations, right? Um, to 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 find out or some hyperparameter tuning to to find out which of the models um, would give you the best. Um, F1 score, right? And then select the one that gives you the, the best F1 score. But this, this, this tutorial is just to show you how to use MLflow to track your experiment. In the next um, tutorial, I would show you actually how to do um, hyperparameter tuning with MLflow. And then you can incorporate this hyperparameter tuning in these three different models and then select the one that actually gives you um, the best um, model, right? In our hyperparameter tuning, and I'm going to leave um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to give leave it very, be very um, give you a very simple tutorial. So I will just be using the logistic regression model. We will assume that that is what we want to tune. Then in your own spare time, you can just incorporate this and then tune the other models and then see the one that gives you the best. So you can see that you can see that just by using ML flow, it's very easy to track what you are doing and what each run is giving you. You don't have to record things manually. So this experiment um, tracking is one of uh, management is a very good feature in ML flow. So yeah, thanks for watching um, this video. Um, if there is anything else I forgot to add, I will do that in the next video. So thanks for watching and keep watching.